module 1 for our structural engineering and construction okay to begin with structural stability and determinacy so the structure is statically determinate when the number of unknown reaction external and internal reaction is equal to the number of equilibrium equations available so we can have this uh, mathematically expressed as r is equals to e the structure is statically indeterminate when the number of unknown reactions external plus internal reaction exceeds the number of equilibrium equations available so we have r is greater than e and we can calculate the degree of indeterminacy d by subtracting r and e next the structure is unstable when the number of unknown reactions exceeds the number of equilibrium equation um, it is sometimes depending on the orientation of the support reactions okay so we can we should investigate first the orientation of supports okay so let's take this example and by the way for beams we simplified that our r or the total reaction are the support reactions lang and that is r sub e x okay this is for simplification and our e here is equals to the 3 plus e c 3 that signifies the equilib uh, equations of equilibrium summation of forces x the y and summation of moment plus e c this is the internal um, support reaction this is in internal supports okay so for trusses uh, this is the simplification the r is the support reactions plus the number of members okay because at every member we have only one internal forces that is the actual forces okay so we have this rex plus the number of member m and we can only use equilibrium equation that is twice of the joint that j signifies the joint of each um, truss member okay so twice times the number of joints because at every joints we can only use the summation of forces x and summation of forces y since the moment at that point is zero now for frames this is the more general um, application for beams okay but we for beams we simplified uh, paganito para mas madali siyang kunin okay for frames r is the support reactions plus three times the number of members okay so that will be rex plus 3m we add three times the number of members in our reactions because at ev every member if we cut at that member um, we can expose three internal forces that is the um, shear the actual force and the moment kaya nagdagdag tayo ng tatlong reaction support dyan. and the equilibrium equation is 3j plus e sub c okay so we have this where ec is 2 for internal roller support and ec is 1 for internal hinge support okay so beginning with this sample problem so we have this figure that is pin and pin support at ends and we have uh, internal hinge support dito sa gitna so basically if we draw the free body diagram we have this at every pin we have two reactions dito so the number of reactions uh, since this is a beam we have four number of reactions next the number of equilibrium equation is 3 plus ec and take note that this is a hinge uh, we should add one here okay so that is four so as we can see our reactions is equal to the equation so ano yung sagot natin dito is that um, statically determinate actually no um, we must observe the kwan, the geometrical um, forms ating beam take note okay take note of this if we will add a load here a lateral load dito sa taas ano yung mangyayari sa beam natin if naka-hinge ito dito sa gitna look what will happen imagine nyo lang just imagine okay so if my load dito sa itaas syempre yung beam natin is iikot lang at this point and also it will rotate at this point and also at this point meaning magmove yung beam natin pag ganito 
So, hindi tayo uh, always magre-rely dito sa equations na we are using. We are using. Okay? So, in this case, klarong-klaro, yung beam is unstable. We should imagine the mechanism on, the, on that beam. Okay? Now, for another, another example. Okay, so imagine this. So, first, we should count the number of reactions. Okay, so at the ruler support, we know that the re only reaction here is the normal reaction that is normal to this plane. And this one naman, that is the pin support. Okay, so counting the number of reactions here, R is equal to 3. Okay, and the number of equilibrium equa equation, that should be 3 plus 0. Take note, wala tayong internal reaction dito. Or internal support. Okay, so we have 3. So as you can see again, R is equal to E. But take note, hindi tayo magre-rely dito always. Now, imagine yung beam. What if maglagay tayo ng load dito? Look what will happen again. Take note that this ruler support is freely to translate parallel to this normal support. Or gugulong yang lang dito yung ating um, support dito. So, magiging ganito yan. Okay. As you can see, pwedeng mag-move yung beam natin pag ganito. Because at that point, ruler support yan. Okay, if we are to imagine this, if may load tayo dito, syempre may moment about that point. Diba? Magkakos ito ng moment about this um, support dito. Now, walang moment na magre-resist um, to that um, external moment due to this load. Because, if we imagine, if hindi naka-specify yung um, orientation ng support natin dito, okay, for example, ganito. Imagine if this um, reaction here is directly towards this point, kung hindi naka-state, so um, it will not cause a um, opposing moment due to this load. Kung baga, hindi ito, walang moment na kukontra dito. Diba, ang main equilibrium talaga is we can take moment at any points of the structure, uh, dapat zero yung um, lalabas na moment. Kumbaga, if this one, lagyan natin ha, if this one will cause rotation at this point, um, ayaw mag highlighter pen, let's use pen. Okay, if this load, di ba may re um, total <coughs> reaction dyan, I mean um, resultant force dito. So, it will cause moment about this distance. Okay, so we are generalizing this one. Okay, because of this um, resultant force, it will cause rotation about this point. Now, ano yung kokontra sa moment na to? Walang ibang moment na kokontra because this um, reaction here is directly towards that point. If in case yung support dito is naka, naka state talaga, if ano yung orientation nito, kumaga, for example, pag ganito yung support dyan. So, it will cause this reaction. So, it may be um, um, statically determinate pag naka-specify talaga yung um, orientation ng support. But in this case, hindi naka-specify. So, we should all take the all possibilities sa uh, reaction dito. Okay? Or, try to imagine the mechanism na lang ng beam natin. Kung ano yung mangyayari, itlalagyan natin yan ng load. Okay? Now, let's proceed to another example. Okay, magiging ganyan yan. So, that should be unstable. Now, let's move. For trust naman. <coughs> Excuse me. For a trust member. Okay, so how can we calculate that? Take note, pinakita ko yung mga um, uh, basis natin to determine the stability of this structure. For trust, uh, this is the free body diagram since this one is pin and this one is roller so we have the two reactions dito and isang reactions dito okay so counting the reaction total reaction 
Diba? That is external reaction plus the number of members here. Okay, so external reaction, we have tatlo. The, the number of members, i-count lang natin yung member ng trust. Okay, that should be 1, 2, 3, counting all that members. And we have 13 members. So substitute, we have 3 plus 13 and the number of re total reactions, that is 16. Now, the number of equilibrium equation, that should be twice of the joint. So, i-count lang natin yung number of joints dito sa truss. That should be this one, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So, we have 8 joints. So, that is 2 times 8. And we have 16. So, from here, we can say that R is equals to E. Okay, so we can, uh, we can determine that this truss is statically determinate. So, unlike Sabine, no? Uh, we should consider the orientation of supports bago tayo maka-conclude if that is determinate or indeterminate. Dito sa truss, directly, uh, we can say that because um, isang tingin pa lang sa structure natin, klarong-klaro, hindi siya matutumba. Unstable meanings, meaning that the structure um, is not safe or kumbaga pwede siyang matumba. Okay? So, one way of looking this is to if may nakita kayong trust at may quadrilateral that should be e unstable kumbaga ganito kumbaga for example we have this trust here ganito yung orientation ng trust and we see a uh, quadrilateral dito okay so as you can as you can imagine if joint ito Pwedeng matumba yung trust na ito kasi walang support reaction dito. I mean, walang bracing. Pwedeng mag-translate yung trust pag ganito. If lagyan siya ng load. Okay, I hope ma-klaro nyo ito. Okay, so that is one way of indicating that the trust is unstable. Okay, so madali lang naman siya. Um, just counting the, num the number of members, the number of reaction ganito lang talaga yung uh, pagdetermine na uh, stability of a structure okay moving this one for frames naman so for this frame again we should know the number of external reaction first so here since that is fixed and ticks we have um, of course we have two reactions here um, forces x and forces y and of course if that is fixed my moment reaction at that point so, the number of external reactions here is anim. Okay, so we should calculate the total number of reaction. That is Rex plus 3M. So, we have this external reaction. Now, we should count the number of member. So, the number of member here is 1, 2, 3. Ganon lang. Just count the number of members. So, we have here 6 plus 3 times 3. And we have 15 um, total reaction and the number of equilibrium equation that is 3j plus e sub c okay so take note that we have an internal hinge dito okay so again 3j j is the joint of the um, the number of joints of the frame so we have this one joint two three and four joint dito so substitute 3j or 3 times 4 plus for hinge, we should add one um, equilibrium equation. Okay, so we have he here. E is 13. <laughs> now, um, R is greater than E. 15 is greater than 13, of course. Excuse me. So, by this, we can say that this is indeterminate. And we can calculate the degree of indeterminacy. R minus E that is equals to 2. Okay? So, this is indeterminate to the second degree structure. Okay? So, ganito lang yan sa structural stability and determinacy. Um, parang, we are just counting the number of reaction and the number of equilibrium equation. Actually, you can um, derive those formulas na pinakita ko kanina. But, anyways, um, ganito lang yan. Mad madali lang naman siyang i-solve. Okay, so, 
Now let's move for analysis on, on a plane trusses. Okay, so we have this. So first of all, um, is a solve talaga natin if this is uh, statically determinate. But since um, klaro klaro naman dito para for uh, compression of our of our time, direction na tayo is solve di nito. Okay. So hinihingal ako. Now, first we should calculate the um, reactions dito. Okay, so ganito yan. So we have this um, RA, GV, and GH since nakapin dito and nakaroller dito. So calculating the reactions first, maybe we can calculate first the GH, summation of forces horizontal or along X. So we have this. Actually, GH is just zero lang because as you can see wala namang external react uh, external force along horizontal okay now by symmetry by looking at this figure um, this forces here is evenly distributed okay so we can say that ra should be equals to gv so by summation of forces or vertical should be zero so we have this ra is equals to gv that is just add all of this um, external load dito or that is just limang 2 kilonewtons or 2 times 5 divided by 2 since GV and RA is equals lang naman okay so we have this reaction RA 2 kilonewtons okay and GV 2 kilonewtons rem okay so we need to calculate first the actual force in member AH okay so how can we do that? Okay, so the best option here is to do the method of joints at joint A. Since ito yung gusto natin is solve that one. Okay? So considering that, we will expose the forces at joint A. That one. Including this um, reaction. So this will be the force on AH and ito yung force in AB. Now, um, by how can we calculate this so ganito lang yan always just use we can always use the equilibrium equation ito lang naman talaga yung solution dito okay so first um, we need to calculate the angle of inclination ito and that is just by um, considering this right triangle here the theta is just um, arc tangent of the opposite this is one six over the adjacent three so that is 63.43 degrees this one the angle of that 63.43 degrees so we can calculate the force in member ah here by summation of forces vertical using this at joint a method at joints a okay so we have force eh take note that um for vertical force in member ah we should take the sine component okay the vertical force here so if FAH sign of this theta plus 2. So, um, going up yung dalawang forces. Okay. So, technique sa uh, analyzing sa truss, we should, uh, mas magandang i-assume natin yung forces tension or away from the joint. Okay. Take note that the force on a truss is tension if that is away from the joint and compression if that is towards the joint. Okay. So, Initially, we should assume that is tension. Now, if ang lalabas sa answer dito is negative, meaning that is in compression, part 1. And I suggest na wag na lang natin baguhin yung orientation ng force dyan. And we, we will um, retain the negative sign dito. Okay, para hindi confusing. Okay, so that is for part 1. For part 2, determine the actual force in member BH. So, nasan yung member BH dito? This one. Okay? So, how can we calculate that? Ano yung best option to calculate member BH? Of course, for me, that should be using method of joints at joint B. Yun. Like that. So, consider at joint B. So, exposing the forces here. That one. So, we have this FBH, FBC, and F. A, B. Again, 
observe my solution always ako nag-assume na that is away from the joints yung mga unknowns okay so para uniform yung solution natin hindi tayo ma-confuse okay so if ang lalabas na answer is negative that is compression if positive that is tension okay so klarong klaro naman siguro if we take um, summation forces vertical FVH is equals to 2 kN or F upward minus 2 and transpose this 2 that is 2 kN and since positive yung lumabas um, that should be in tension for part okay so for number 3 determine the actual force in member HI Okay, so how can we calculate this member force and member HI dito? Um, take note, no? Um, when using the method of joints, um, at least man lang, dalawang unknown forces lang yung involved dito at that point. So if we take joint H, as you can see, we can expose this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Maraming forces dyan. And that can be calculated. Okay, kulang yung um, number of equations na magagamit natin dyan. So, another method here is the method of section. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this original figure. So, ano yung method of section? If we will cut at this point or anywhere, no? You can cut um, anywhere. Pwede pa nga pa-curve yung cut natin. So, best option here is ganito. Okay, so we will expose... Um, the forces on either on the left section or we can use the forces on the right section but mas magandang at the left section yung consider natin kasi konti lang yung mga forces involves dito and it will be like this okay ito lang yung tatlong forces na mai expose that is the forces this one FHI this FCH and this one is FBC okay so, we need to calculate the, this FHI. So, the best option is to take moment at C. Okay, bucket magte take moment at C because as you can see dito, this forces ay hindi natin masasali sa equation natin because this can um, cause rotation at C. Okay? So, by that, summation of moment about C should be zero. So, we have um Let's assume that the clockwise moment is positive and counterclockwise moment is negative. Okay, so we can have this FHI moment tayo times 6. Diba? This will cause clockwise rotation. And then this one, 2 about 0.6. That will cause clockwise rotation pa rin. So 2 times dalawang 3. So that is 2 times 6. Then this one will cause counterclockwise rotation or ipapa rotate na yung at joint C counterclockwise. So negative minus 2 times 3. Okay, again, um, you can use positive counterclockwise, negative clockwise. But for uniformity, gagawin kong clockwise positive, counterclockwise negative. Okay, so we have this equation and we, ca we can calculate the force in member HI that is negative 1 kN so if this is negative meaning that is in compression that member is in compression okay so that will be the part 3 now um, the actual force in member GE member JE um, this one okay so how can we calculate this one let's go back to the original video now, best option dito is to cut at that point naman. I-cut natin kung saan ma-i-expose ma yung gusto natin kunin. Okay, so ganyan. So, mas maiging dito natin gamitin yung section na ito. Okay, because as you can see, konti lang yung forces involved. Now, how to calculate this, this force in member um, JE? Okay, so take note, hindi lang kung ano, um, kunwaring gumamit tayo ng metal sections, um, hindi tayo prohibited na gumamit ng summation of forces uh, vertical and horizontal. We can use that also. Okay, baka nasa isip nyo or na misinterpret nyo basta method of section, uh, we can only use summation of moment. 
No, we can also use summation of forces vertical and horizontal. By considering this, okay, these are the forces here. So this is the force FJ, GA. Ito yung focus natin dito. These are the other forces here. So as you can see, if we will take summation of forces vertical, should be zero. And take note again that this force is inclined at angle of 63.43 degrees. Okay, this one. This is inclined at this angle. So, as you can see, if we take summation of forces vertical dito, the only vertical forces involved is this one, 2, minus 2, and this vertical component of FJ. Okay? These two forces are horizontal. So, um, we can't include that to the equation. Okay? So, we have this summation of forces vertical. As you can see, no? 2 upward positive 2 minus 2 then minus f g a sine of 63.43 and actually that is just zero diba this 2 minus 2 is zero so wala na siyang um, force internal force dito okay so at first look hindi pa natin ma-determine no, if that is zero but um, using this solution zero talaga yung force in member g okay now, for the last number, determine the actual force in member IE. So, this one, I and E. So, maybe it should be 0 ren. Okay, we can count that. We can check that solution through the solution. Okay. So, ganito yan. Hindi ko pala nasali yung solution dito for member IE. So, I'll give this to you na lang. Okay, you should calculate the actual force in member IE. And I'm pretty sure that that is zero lang then dapat. Okay, because as you can see, if you take at joint E, wala namang force ito, at wala namang force ito, meaning, walang force na dapat i-resist dito. Okay, or, or you can uh, prove that solution. Okay, so let's move to another example. Two flexible cables, CF and DE. This one, CF and DE. Brace at thrust shown. This one. So, these are the bracing. That is cable. Okay. So, basically, if wala itong cable na to, that is uh, indeterminate thrust. Diba? Because may na-form na quadrilateral dyan. Excuse me. Okay. So, as you can see, if you... Um, what do we call this? If we investigate, this thrust is indeterminate because if it if we count the number of reaction here and the number of equilibrium equation, um, the number of unknown reaction is greater than E. Okay, you can check that. But take note, we, we should take advantage that the cable only resists tension and cannot resist compression. If if meron man, that is very negligible na yung um, resistance niya in compression. Okay, but basically, we, we can neglect the force in member of a cable if that is in compression. Okay, so how can we determine if anong thrust, I mean, anong cable dito ang nag -e execute Okay, so ganito yan. Um, first, what is the magnitude of the weight? If the actual compressive force in member CD is 8.9 kN. So, nagbigay siya ng actual compressive force in member CD. That one. So, best option dito is to determine uh, muna yung um, cable na nag -e execute or cable na nag -re resist ng tension. And that should be cut. And by the way, no, this is the... Um, free body diagram so since this is pin and roller support so basically we have two reactions here but as you can see wala naman siyang um, horizontal external load dito so that should be that one okay ra and rb so by summation of moment about a this one we will express for uh, first the reactions to w since w yung unknown dito okay W times 8 
uh, summation of moment about a tayo, no? So, w times a cos clockwise rotation minus rb times tatlong 4 meters, that is 12. So, expressing rb to w, that is 2 thirds of w. Okay, now expressing ra to w, uh, we can use this summation of forces vertical. So, that should be ra plus rb, but take note that is 2 thirds of w minus w. That is 1 thirds of W. Okay, so um, substitute natin. So here, as you can see, W na lang yung unknown dito. Okay, now we will cut at this point para ma-expose yung um, cables natin. Yun, take note that this should be 45 degrees since that the height is 4 and the I mean the run is 4 red. So tangent of 4 over 4 is equal to 45 degrees. Now, first, we should investigate ano yung cable na nagre-resist ng tension dito. So, ganito yan. ba? As we look at this figure, the external force involved in vertical um, direction, that is only this one, one-third of W. So, pag upward yung force dito, meaning dapat i-resist ito ng downward forces. So, walang ibang member dito na magre-resist sa upward forces kundi itong dalawang cable. So, this one should be and take note then na may binigay na um, axial force in member CD. Since sinabing axial compressive, so ilagay na lang natin dito na towards the joint. Okay? Or you can do either way na um, away from the joint but we should take negative value. Okay, so anyways, towards the joint yan because that is compressive force. Now, again, take note that this is upward force. So, it resists yan ng downward forces. So, that should be ganito. This cable should go should be going down and also this cable should be going down. Now, as you can see, ano yung cable na nag-re-resist ng tensile force dito? Diba? Tensile force is away from the joint. So, this one is away from the joint and this one is towards the joint this is a compress compressive force so we can neglect this one diba? cable don't resist compressive force and this one is the tension on cable CF okay now since we can I mean we um, we are sure now that this the cable CF resist tension we can use here summation of forces vertical and that should be one thirds of w minus tcf sine of 45 the vertical component of this um, cable is equals to zero so here we will express the tension in cf as w pa rin, since w pa yung hinahanap natin okay now if we take summation of moment about e dito okay Ano yung matitirang unknown dito? Actually, we can directly calculate this W by summation of moment about F dito, no? Since we know that wala na tayong force in member DE at cable DE. But in this solution, gagawin, gagawin natin summation of moment about E. So we have here W times 4 that will cause clockwise rotation. This one naman will cause clockwise rotation pa rin. So, TCF cosine of 45 degrees times 4. So, this is the horizontal component of this tension. Times 4, this is the uh, moment R. Minus 8.9 times 4. And that is, and take note that TCF is expressed in W. So, substitute natin dito and we have W. 13.35 kilonewtons. Okay. So we calculated for the part one. Then determine the which tension diagonal cable is acting and the force in it. So as you can see, we determine na ano yung cable na nagre-resist ng tension and that is TCF. Okay, so by the way, um, before we proceed, ipapakita natin what if sa kabilang section yung gagamitin natin. This one. Okay, so how can we determine dito? if gagamitin natin yung right section. Okay, the same pa rin. Um, we will expose the forces. 
Ang ganito yan. Kanina, yung up part force dito is isa lang. Dito naman, dalawa na siya. That should involve DW. So, ang gagawin natin dito, kukunin natin yung net forces. I mean, the net force at vertical direction. And the net force here, that is just W minus 2 thirds of W. Of course, the resultant force should be going down. That is 1 thirds of W lang. Okay? Now, as you can see, if this is a vertical force going down, dapat yung resisting forces dito should be going up. So, the forces in each cable should be going up. That one. And, take note. Ibalik natin. So, dito makikita natin na yung resisting ang tensile cable is itong cable CF pa rin. The same lang kanina. But, nabaliktad na lang sa uh, or orientation na ito. Okay? So, if take summation a moment about F, so dito makakalculate na natin yung W. The same lang yan, lalabas sa ginawa natin kanina. Okay? So, pinakita ko lang to para um, for kalang, detailing of the solution. Okay? But anyways, it's up to you ano yung gagamitin nyo. Okay? So, proceeding this, so we need to calculate the tension on diagonal cable. So, actually, we can directly calculate na that because we have this equation. Okay? So, if we substitute this W yung nakuha natin, so we have this one, and the answer is 6.29 kN per part. Okay, madali lang. Now, let's proceed for part 3. If W is 20 kN, what is the actual force in member AC? This one. So, since um, we calculated na the reaction here as a function of W, so, diretsyo na tayo. No? So, take note that the W is 20 kN uh, at force, I mean, at joint A, Yon, may expose yung force AC. So, we have this one. Summation of force vertical. And take note again, that is 45 degrees. So, this one, one-third of W, that is 20, plus FAC, sine of 45 degrees. So, we have this one. Negative 9.43 kN for part 3. Okay? 